Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be covering everything you need to know about the Amazon affiliate program as a complete beginner. I've personally been using the Amazon Associates program for over six years now. We're going to be taking a look at my last half decade of earnings. We're going to talk about the best niches to get started with right now. What I can promise you is if you commit to the duration of this video, you're not going to have to jump around all over the place because I'm going to answer everything that you need to know to get started right here in this video. So my recommendation, treat this like a course or a college class, for example, grab something to take notes with, maybe grab a drink and also eliminate any of those distractions that you might have around you at this point in time. Now, guys, I have no pitch for you, no course, nothing to click. This is what I call 100% straight value. And if you enjoy that, all that I ask in return is that you drop a like on this video. And then if at any point you find that you've learned from this or you've gotten a lot of value from this video, at at that point, I would ask you to subscribe and hit the bell for my upcoming videos about affiliate marketing and other business related topics. We're gonna start off here by talking about what is affiliate marketing for beginners, but I'm gonna keep this section relatively brief because I just did a full 50 minute course on affiliate marketing for beginners. I'm gonna put a card up in the corner for later. And there's also a link down in the description below as this video is pretty much all of my affiliate knowledge just dumped into one place, looking at all sorts of different examples and things like that. To put it simply, affiliate marketing is the business model of making money by referring sales to other products or services out there that you yourself have not necessarily created. So you essentially become this paid marketer or spokesperson for products and services and your job becomes to gather leads on the internet in terms of people who are curious about those things and potentially looking to make a purchase or sign up for something. But the best way to truly understand this is to just look at some examples. So now we're gonna put ourselves in the shoes of a consumer who is looking to make a purchase. And oftentimes people are gonna start off on Google or YouTube when doing research about particular products. So we're gonna use the topic here of frying pans. This person doesn't know what frying pan they want, but they are in the market and they're gonna do some research. So let's search for best frying pans and take a look at those results or best frying pan in this case. So affiliate marketing is pretty much all of these websites right here, websites with very high authority, such as Food Network, for example, rank at the very top. Now we're gonna get into a deeper discussion about this later as far as why certain blogs will rank at the top. But for now, I just want you to understand what this business is. So when it comes to the Amazon side of affiliate marketing, it's pretty much the same thing as affiliate marketing, except you're sending that traffic over to Amazon. Most of these websites here are probably doing exactly that. So let's jump into a couple and I'll show you how to tell whether or not a blog is doing affiliate marketing. This article here covers the seven best nonstick frying pans tested by Food Network Kitchen. So definitely a lot of authority here on this topic and if you scroll down sure enough right here our top non-stick pan picks some of these are Amazon and in fact the very next link there is an Amazon affiliate link there's very small operations out there in terms of people doing Amazon associates making a couple hundred dollars a month and then you have massive media brands leveraging it as a way to monetize their traffic probably making tens of thousands if not six figures a month and so affiliate marketing is really what you're seeing right here here. It's information on the internet that basically helps people with a purchase intent. If we do scroll down, we can see this is a very authoritative article. It has visual examples of the testing. And so honestly, there was a lot of work and time that went into this resource. But you can also see right here more direct links to Amazon in the form of buttons. Now, as I said in my other video on affiliate marketing, this realm here in terms of trying to rank for very lucrative search terms like best frying pan on Google, this is like the Olympics of affiliate marketing. I mean, it's not easy to compete with blogs like Food Network or the New York Times or foodandwine.com or Consumer Reports. That's why I want to show you next the realm of YouTube affiliate marketing. That's where I got started with Amazon affiliate marketing. And it's also how I recommend a complete beginner get started because it's a much less competitive environment. And then you can build into the blogging space over time. Over here on YouTube now, we're doing a slightly more specific search term, which is the best frying pan for camping. And that's because when you're getting started as a beginner, my recommendation is to go after these long tail keywords that are less competitive, but easier to rank for. And oftentimes it just means answering a more specific question. So instead of just the best frying pan in the world, obviously the best frying pan is going to depend on the use case. 
If we do the search here, best frying pan for camping, we're going to now see videos ranking. And of course you might get a couple of ads at the top, but most likely these videos here are going to be doing the same type of affiliate marketing, but just on a smaller scale. If we click on the very top link here, that's not an ad. If we look here in the description, just like that, actually, this is right here linked to Amazon. Something like this here, this video, was posted June 20th, 2022. So it's a little bit over a year old. The channel is relatively small here and it's gotten 3,100 views. So I'm willing to bet at least a dozen or so people, maybe even more have clicked over, clicked on that link and either bought this pan or something else. And the beauty of the Amazon program is that you can make money from all of these random purchases people are making within that 24 hour cookie window. But we're gonna get into more of that later. For now, I'm just gonna play the video just to give you an idea of the quality. And and actually the crazy thing is too, this video is only one minute and 25 seconds long. This is an extremely short video. If you think somebody shot this with a camera, I'm telling you right now, this is most likely shot with a phone. There is some narration here, but you can literally just make simple videos like this with the phone that you already have. And here's evidence of these exact videos ranking. Maybe you then enter the description, click on the Amazon link. And just like that, here is that $39.95 outdoor gourmet frying pan. Now it is, you know, a highly rated 4.5 out of five stars. So it probably is a very good product. And this is one of the important things with affiliate marketing is making authentic recommendations and not just recommending crap. That's how you get, you know, looked at as a trustworthy resource that people come back to. Now I just want to answer some basic questions that you might have about the program itself. So first of all, it is completely free to join. There's no cost. And I wouldn't recommend joining any affiliate programs that you have to pay to then promote the product that is generally scam to territory. Now, what will generally happen is oftentimes it's pretty easy to get approved for the program. But then if you're not generating clicks within a certain period of time, I think it's somewhere around 180 days, you might get booted from the program. But nonetheless, you do need to have a platform in order to join. And that can in most cases be a blog, it could also be a YouTube channel or potentially other social media platforms like TikTok, Instagram, etc. Now with the Amazon Associates program, you're able to link to pretty much everything on Amazon and potentially earn a commission from it. There are a few categories that are um, no commissions where they don't pay out on them. Alcohol is one of them. I didn't actually even know they sold alcohol on Amazon. And you also can't earn commissions on gift cards. But other than that, you can pretty much earn a commission on anything under the sun that is sold on Amazon. We're gonna jump into the commission schedule later, but for now, this is just the basics of how it works. And the only other thing that we really need to cover right now that's important is that 24 hour tracking cookie on Amazon. A lot of people throw shade at the Amazon affiliate program because they don't pay very high commissions anymore. In fact, they lower them every couple of years. I've seen them decline quite a bit in my time doing this, but it's still a very solid venture because think about how many people have Amazon accounts, they have their payment information stored and ready to go. So it's very easy to convert with these clicks because this is Amazon at the end of the day, the e-commerce powerhouse. And this right here is one of the most important parts about the program. So I really want to focus in here. It's the 24 hour cookie associated with the tracking link. So anytime somebody clicks on an affiliate link, there is tracking that is happening there that basically attributes that lead back to you, the affiliate. And this is what allows Amazon to tell if someone makes a purchase and then that is, you know, attributed back to you and you would earn your commission. Every program out there is going to have a different duration of time that that tracking cookie is active. For example, over on my farmland blog, we work with some accredited platforms that have a 60 day cookie duration because that's a very long conversion cycle for a accredited investment platform. Robinhood, on the other hand, we looked at in the ultimate tutorial I did on affiliate marketing, and that is a seven day cookie duration. That's a shorter version because they have a shorter conversion cycle. In the case of Amazon, it's one of the shortest, but I'm going to explain why it's very lucrative. It's a 24 hour cookie, but the crazy part is you can earn commissions on any qualifying items, which is pretty much anything but alcohol and gift cards placed in the customer's shopping cart within 24 hours of their arrival at Amazon via your associates link somebody can click on your Amazon link and then they can leave and not make a purchase 
go back later, 12 hours later, open up their app, order cat litter, and you can earn a commission on that cat litter because of that 24 hour cookie window. So there's really two main ways that people will approach Amazon associates. It's either targeting these high commission, high ticket categories where you can make a lot of money on those conversions, or it's taking a different approach and just trying to get the highest volume of clicks over to Amazon and then looking to make money from these indirect affiliate purchases where people are just buying something else and you're earning a commission because your cookie is still activated. Keep that in the back of your mind. You don't always have to go after high ticket. You could also go after high volume of clicks and do well with Amazon Associates. Another important factor to consider with any business opportunity is whether or not there are geographic limitations because a lot of affiliate marketing programs are oftentimes limited to the United States only. The good thing is Amazon is such a powerhouse that they offer international affiliate programs and it's available in 17 locations around the world. So we're just going to touch on this briefly as I do have a lot of uh, international viewers on this channel. So if you are in any of these markets, you can apply for these specific Amazon affiliate programs. But as you can see, they have it obviously in the United States. They have a Canadian, Mexican version. Uh, it looks like a Brazilian version as well. The European markets, I'm not familiar with all of these extensions, but it looks like uh, United Kingdom, East India, and then Asia and Australia. If you're watching Watching this video from any of those territories, you can in fact apply for the program. You just have to go to your country's specific Amazon Associates page. Now, this is definitely not people's favorite topic, but I do want to cover realistic expectations as this will help you to understand whether or not you are doing things in the correct manner because maybe things seem slow at first, but that's typically how it is with something like affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing is a very long-term business model. It's something where you build this portfolio of content that that then makes you money over time. My best comparison here is it's a lot like compound interest. It is definitely not a get rich quick opportunity at all that I just want to convey to you. Most people who dedicate a few hours a week to Amazon Associates will end up making $100, maybe a few hundred dollars per month within the next 12 to 18 months. I've talked to dozens of people before who have done this and everybody typically lands in that same territory. I definitely encourage you to set a realistic goal here. Maybe Maybe your goal is to get to the point where you're making $10 a day from Amazon Associates. And if your goal was to do that in 12 to 18 months, I think that's a very realistic goal. And that may not sound like a lot of money, but keep in mind, guys, that people like me have been making that couple hundred dollars a month from Amazon for like six years now. So these things typically just keep on printing leads and printing referrals in terms of that content out there. Okay, guys, so here we are inside of my Amazon Associates dashboard. And and we're gonna get into more of the specifics later in terms of the Amazon fee schedule, the best niches and things like that. But for now, I just wanna give you a overview and tour of the platform, look at some of my past earnings and different things like that. And once again, we do have that table of contents down below if you wanna skip around at any point during this video. So far this year, as I've mentioned, I really don't promote this stuff anymore. This is all legacy content, but I have made a total of $885 this year. So it's right about $100 dollars per month. It's definitely slowed down from where it was in prior years, but that's because I used to focus more time on content directed towards Amazon related products or bounties, which I'm going to show you those shortly. But if we scroll down here and just look at some of the basics here, you can see that I've done 10,239 clicks on my Amazon affiliate links so far this year. That's resulted in 304 ordered items, 322 things that were shipped. So maybe there were some multiple multiple quantities there ordered of certain things. There were some returns, so you might get chargebacks. And if you ever see a negative dollar value on your earnings, it's because of those returned items because we'll basically come back out of your commission pool. And then my conversion rate here is 2.97%. So that's the number of people that actually ordered something divided by the number of clicks on my Amazon link. So that 2.97% conversion is relatively standard, and that's a higher rate of conversion than you're going to see with most affiliate programs programs. And that's because of the fact that people are just so familiar with Amazon, they already have their payment information stored. And oftentimes, they're just clicking buy now and they're off to the races. The total revenue is 15.2 K or so that's how much Amazon has made. And then my earnings there is 560 and 71 cents. Uh, now the, bo the bounties over here, this is for referring to free trials, I've done quite a few of these for the audible free trial program. So if we scroll down here, you can see that so 
far in this year, I've, I've done 58 of these referrals, which has earned me $325. And you can see as recently as August 10th, 2023, Audible Plus free trial digital membership. So that was a $5 commission. And unfortunately, the custom date range here only goes back 90 days. So I'm not able to show you guys like my five years of earnings, which is rather disappointing, but I am at least able to show you last year's earnings, for example. So what we're going to do now is change this window of time. And we're going to look at last year and just take a look at my full year earnings from the Amazon program. Again, just to give you expectations of what you can do yourself over time. This right here is 2927 total commissions generated. So just under $3,000. And you can see here the bulk of that last year was these Amazon bounties. So that was $2,500 just in those Amazon free trials. So you got to figure that's one video that I made. I'm going to show it to you shortly. That is multiple years old. And that alone made me $2,500 last year. But what I want to do now is get into some of the specific commissions that I earned as that can be extremely interesting to see how that 24 hour cookie works in some of those random purchases that you can earn commissions on because of that cookie window. Now, last year, I didn't generate too much in commissions. It was $346 for the entire year. And I believe the commissions so far this year are quite a bit higher. Well, let me just go ahead and switch that over now. And yeah, so it jumped up to about 560. Now that's largely because I did another video, which I'm going to show you. And this is all old content, but the video actually took time to surface and do well, which is what happens a lot with these YouTube affiliate reviews is it may take a few months for them to surface and rank at the top. And you can see here that the top category is the Amazon cloud camera of which I've done $11,689 in ordered revenue. I think that's opening it up now for me. So yeah, we can see actually the specifics of every single item that was ordered. So there's like the weatherproof version, the uh, wireless version, different versions of it here. So you can get super granular with your data. But this right here is an example of products I'm directly linking to and discussing, seeing as I have videos about this stuff. But if we actually look at some of these other things I'm earning commissions on, these are things I've never discussed on my YouTube channel before. We'll just sort this by total ordered revenue. And you can see computers, tablets, components. That's the second most popular category. Health and household. It says there was one product ordered and it looks like it was the expensive high ticket item potentially. So let's see what this one is. It wasn't one specific item, but it does break out the categories of items here. There was somebody who purchased the Health Smart Essential Oil Diffuser. In fact, they ordered three of them for a total of $110.97. And if you're curious about the product, you can click on it and it will bring you right over there on Amazon. Here I was talking about the Blink cameras and then the Audible membership, which is an audiobook membership. Meanwhile, generating commissions for essential oil diffusers. So that is the beauty of the Amazon program is all of these random commissions that can be generated from that cookie window. This is another interesting one here. This is a $69 joint supplement somebody ordered. Relatively expensive product. I guess it's a little bit cheaper now, but you'd be amazed at some of these high ticket purchases that people will make. And it's just because they click on your link and then they typically revisit Amazon later and make a purchase they were planning on making anyway. Amazon still attributes that back to you. The last category, just for fun, we'll look at major appliances. I did make a sale of $199 in this category, and it looks like it was for a Avalon bottom loading water cooler. So I sold one of these bad boys uh, at some point in time here. It doesn't tell me exactly when this was, but I did earn a commission off of that. So this again, just shows you some of these random products that you may find yourself earning commissions on through Amazon. Now, later on in this video, I'm going to show you how to generate your product links and things like that. But for now, the last thing I want to show you is the bounties, which is the free trial section of Amazon. And then from here, this is going to give you a list of all of the eligible bounties on Amazon where you can make money by referring to free trials of different things. So up top, you can see the bounty program includes Amazon Prime, Music Unlimited, Wedding Registry Services, Amazon Family Audible, and Baby Registry. So depending on your niche, these may be a fit for you. If we scroll down here, you can also get specifics on the available bounties. And you can also see there's specific things for like Amazon Fresh, Amazon Audible Plus. All of these are different promotional opportunities that you can um, promote yourself and earn those bounties if people actually sign up. But this one, as you've seen, 
thing has paid out quite a bit for me over the years. After I show you this, I'm going to show you the source of where all of those conversions are coming from, which is a simple YouTube video that I made, I believe, over three years ago now. It's a $5 bonus for each Audible Plus free trial and then a $10 bounty for each paid membership. So you can actually make a potential of $15 here if somebody signs up for the free trial and then converts to a full membership. So that's the Amazon dashboard. But the question now becomes, where is that traffic coming from? I'm going to now show you my two examples of case studies here of the specific videos that I've done for um, Amazon associates in terms of specifically linking to products on Amazon over on YouTube, because these are the exact types of videos I'd recommend making yourself. First, we have the Audible review on YouTube. And as you're going to see, I don't have first place ranking on this anymore. In fact, I have second place ranking, but this video is three years old and it's done 133,000 views. So I'm pretty sure, you know, you could tell now looking at that, how that could result in over $10,000 worth of those free trial earnings, because this can convert pretty highly as every single one of those 133,000 viewers was potentially interested in signing up for the audiobook platform. Now I'll show you just so you're familiar with it. If you click into this video, you'll see right up top where you can click on the link to sign up for Audible. This is my affiliate link and you saw where there was just a commission earned from this a few days ago, for example. So even though this is an old legacy piece of content, it's still churning out those free trials, not in the volume that it used to be, but if I wanted to, I could easily redo this video and easily recapture that top place ranking. But at this point in time, there are other opportunities that I'm personally pursuing. The top Audible review video right now is a year old, so it could be an opportunity for you to jump into the mix. Okay, so and then the other example I have is my Blink camera review, which doesn't seem to be ranking first place anymore, but as you could see, it's still generated like almost $12,000 of revenue in the Amazon Cloud camera segment, so it definitely is driving a lot of conversions. But the other thing I want to show you as well is that with these product review videos, you're not just making money on Amazon, but you're also able to make money from the YouTube ad revenue. So I want to hop into my YouTube analytics and show you how much money these videos have made in ad revenue, because that's going to be an additional revenue stream on top of making money from the Amazon commissions. If we take a look at the Blink camera video here, we can see that this one has made about $1,900 in ad revenue since it was uploaded. So that's actually a pretty decent amount of money from one particular YouTube video. But you do have the potential to have multiple revenue streams here following the YouTube approach because these videos make ad revenue and can generate a lot of money in commissions. And then for the Audible review video, this has made a very similar amount of money here, just about $2,000. This one only gets like 32 views every 48 hours, so it definitely isn't getting much traffic anymore, but even that small amount of traffic is still resulting in conversions and commissions being earned. The next topic is choosing a niche for focusing on your videos or articles that you're going to be creating. And it's super important to think about this, especially with Amazon, because there's outright just some categories that suck because they're low commissions and you don't want to necessarily just pick something because it has the potential to make you money. But with Amazon, it's not a fair and equal environment where every category is super lucrative. There's some that are just really, really bad to get into. So what we're going to do is open up the Amazon Associates its fee schedule, take a look at some of those, and I'm going to tell you some of what I think are the best categories, as well as some of the categories to avoid, even though they seem super interesting, they're just very low commission categories. Now this right here is the standard fee schedule, and as I mentioned before, they have decreased these fees over time. Once in a while, they'll also run incentives too that could be specific to particular users, so understand that fee schedules could vary from Amazon associate user to a different user, but these are the standard rates in and if you want to look at them yourself, a simple Google search for the Amazon fee schedule will bring you right to this. But we're going to start at looking at just the overall categories and some of the breakdown here. It also shows us the bounties, which we can look into a bit more as well. And then I'm going to tell you some of the niches that I'd recommend and the ones that I would avoid based on these commissions. But anyway, let's scroll to the very top here. And right off the bat, a 10% category here is uh, Amazon coins and then luxury beauty. Amazon coins, I'm not even familiar with 
with what that is. I'm sure it's not a cryptocurrency. Maybe it's like gaming coins or something like that, but it's probably something that's really difficult to get conversions for. After that, we have this 8% category here, which is furniture, home, home improvement, lawn and garden, pets, products, pantry. Excluding the pantry side there, pretty much all of those categories mentioned are really solid because a lot of furniture and home improvement products, for example, are higher ticket products. So if you're making like 8% commission on selling a $200 ladder, that would be like 16 bucks every time you sell a ladder, for example. So those are some solid categories right there. In the 6% category, you have headphones, beauty, musical instruments, business and industrial supplies, Outdoors and tools is a 5.5% category. Then you have digital music, grocery, physical music, handmade, and then digital videos that are 5%. Books, 4.5%. This also includes healthcare, sports, kitchen, automotive, and baby. And then this 4% category here is a lot of the Amazon branded uh, electronics, whether it's the Fire Stick, Kindle devices. There's also Amazon fashion and private label within this category, Amazon Echo, Ring, watches, jewelry, luggage, etc. So for example, Blink cameras that I have done the video review for previously, I believe falls in this 4% category. And then you have Amazon Fresh as well as Toys. That's a 3% category. PC, PC components, DVD and Blu-ray 2.5. TVs and video games 2%. Physical video games and video game consoles 1%. And then we have the 0% categories here, which includes gift cards. And there's a few others as well. Apparently wireless service plans. We talked about alcoholic beverages and then also digital Kindle products purchased as subscriptions, food prepared and delivered from a restaurant, Amazon App Store, Prime Now, Amazon Pay Places, or Prime Wardrobe purchases. Those are all 0% commission. And then all other categories here are 4%. Let's start off by the categories to avoid. And it's honestly anything here that's really in this sub 2.5% category. Even at 3%, if you're super passionate about toys, you could probably do pretty well with that. One other thing you have to consider here when picking a niche is whether or not you're looking at a seasonal trend here where there's gonna be like a big amount of sales at one point in time. For example, with toys, it would be during Christmas and you might not sell as many toys throughout the year. Or is this something that's evergreen where there's consistent volume for people searching searching for it and buying it all throughout the year. But you might also find those seasonal products might be less competitive as it's a bit less lucrative if you're not able to make money from it year round. PC components at 2.5%, that's pretty lousy unless it's like high end, you know, GPUs and stuff like that. TVs at 2%, that's really probably not worth covering at this point in time. It's also really difficult to make content about them unless you're buying new TVs all of the time. And then video games and consoles, it's something that people have asked me about hundreds of times, I feel like at this point in time where somebody says my passion is video games, can I make money with a blog talking about video games? It's really difficult to do. Case in point right here, you're making like 1% on that. If you were selling a physical copy of a $60 video game, you're talking like 60 cents commission. So unless you're getting a really high volume of clicks to your video game links, it's probably not going to be very lucrative. So that's what I would avoid. And then obviously anything in the 0% category is a, is a given. So don't think you're going to do an affiliate blog selling alcohol on Amazon. Now let's talk about some of the specific categories that are good lucrative categories in terms of a decent commission and people are doing research about these things prior to purchasing. First of all, physical books can be a decent category as a volume play because you can generate a lot of clicks over to Amazon from content about books. You can create simple content like this. This is the 10 best business books for beginners. And this article on our blog gets a couple hundred hits every single month and does generate a decent number of clicks over to Amazon. So for example, here we have the E-Myth by Michael Gerber. So somebody could read the synopsis and say, okay, that seems interesting. Let me go ahead and click here. And this is the Amazon link where we would then of course earn that 4.5% commission if somebody makes the purchase. But a lot of people will click on links for books just to check the price and Amazon got started as a book selling website basically. So people are super familiar with buying books over on Amazon. So both of those factors make this a pretty decent category. 
Tools is a really good category at 5.5% and a lot of people already have them. So let's say for example, you have a big collection of uh, drills and hand tools and things like that. Well, if they're sold on Amazon, you can do simple reviews of them, just like the guy we saw there doing a video review with his phone of that frying pan and just build up a portfolio of a couple of those videos. You could then apply for the program, which I'll show you how to do that shortly and begin earning 5.5% commissions on power tools, for example. Another category, outdoors, we talked about camping, hiking, kayaking, anything like that, like kayaks, for example. I know somebody who has done very well on Amazon with a kayak niche blog because it's high ticket and a pretty high commission category. And then we talked about this already, but I'll just revisit it one more time. This top category here, the 8%, everything except for pantry is really solid. Pet products, I mean, you got to think Amazon is really competing with Chewy, for example, so they're willing to pay high commissions on those pet products, for example. And then quickly, we'll just scroll down here and visit the bounties as it's a more organized environment here. We talked about a lot of this already, but this will again walk you through all of the different uh, referrals you can do for Amazon for Audible. These are generally lower. It's like three to five dollars for a free trial and then 10 to 15 dollars if somebody's actually signing up for paid membership, for example. Every person who is involved in Amazon Associates can link out to these bounties and earn referrals from these services. And when it comes down to actually creating content, whether it's simple articles about Amazon products or listicles, and we're going to cover those shortly, or even if it's just simple YouTube videos, you are going to want to lock in on one given niche. Maybe it's like power tools, for example, or outdoor gear. You don't want to be jumping all over the place because on both YouTube and Google, they want to see topical authority being built around a subject, which basically means that you're covering the same subject over time, adding more information, adding value on that area of expertise, and then Google looks at you as a authority on that subject. But if you want to get started earlier on and test out a couple of ideas, don't feel like you have to go all in on one niche out of the gate. You could potentially try a couple of different product review videos based on things you already own and then get yourself into the program. And then based on the results, you could then figure out if you want to niche down into one of those specific product categories. We're now gonna talk about building a platform because you are going to need that in order to apply for the Amazon Associates program. They won't let just anybody out there join. You have to basically have a website or YouTube channel or some type of social media presence. That way you can say, hey, here is where I'm going to be promoting Amazon and linking to these products. One of the first options you have is using a simple website builder like Wix or Squarespace, and you can put together a website in a very short period of time. Now you are going to need to build out this website with a decent number of articles, I would say a dozen or so, and then put on a homepage about and things like that and build it out as a mini affiliate blog to get approved. But I am gonna be doing a video in the future about how to build an affiliate blog from scratch using WordPress. So if you're interested in seeing that when it comes out, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell now for notifications on that video. The only downside with website builders is that you can be a little bit limited in terms of customization and they tend to be more expensive than a self-hosted WordPress website. We'll take a look here. For example, it looks like the cheapest you can get is like $16 a month. That's pretty expensive. You can get self-hosted websites costing you under $100 per year and in some cases even cheaper. This right here is an example of a self-hosted WordPress website. This is one of my starter affiliate blogs that I have with a business partner of mine. We're actually not making money with it yet. We're just building traffic, but it's wineinvestorclub.com. And it's a very simple blog that has information about some wine investment platforms and things like that, articles down below. If you click into the different articles, you can see the different content displayed. And it, this is basically where you would add in links at a later date when you're ready to monetize your site. But this is option number two, building a website yourself using WordPress, you can get more out of it in terms of customization, and it can also be a lot less expensive. The next option is creating a YouTube channel as your platform. I think this is the easiest route for most people. It's also completely free because you don't have to pay for web hosting or anything like that. You can literally use your phone to record your YouTube videos, and it doesn't have to be anything crazy right out of the gate. This is just a random YouTube channel here. They had a review of a Coleman tent, for example. It looks like, it looks like an RV camping style channel. You wouldn't even need to build something this big. You could probably get approved on Amazon these days with five or six videos that are doing okay and getting you a small number of views and subscribers. That could be enough to get you approved in the application process. 
And then option number four, which is rarely discussed in videos about Amazon Associates, I don't know why people don't cover this because it's pretty important, is buying a blog. A lot of people sell Amazon affiliate blogs. You can look at various marketplace websites where you could potentially buy an existing Amazon blog that's already making money, that already has links in place, and then you're pretty much buying your way into the business and buying your way into that program because when you buy that blog, it's gonna come with the keys to the castle in terms of the passwords and everything for that affiliate dashboard and you would just simply swap over that payment info or perhaps you're buying the LLC that comes along with it. If we go over here to the monetizations and choose Amazon Associates, it's now bringing up a list of Amazon affiliate blogs that are currently for sale. Now, as you can see, a lot of these come with a pretty hefty price tag. This top one here is $352,000, making a monthly net profit here of about $8,100. If you do build these things up to a massive portfolio, you can sell them and have a pretty nice exit. I've personally sold equity in my farmland investing blog. I haven't fully sold off a blog yet, but it is something that I definitely plan on doing at some point in time. There is a lot of value in what you are creating here with these blogs. Another example here, we have a jewelry related affiliate blog for $80,000 that's doing $2,275 in monthly revenue and $2,100 in monthly net profit. Some of these are even more. This one's $1.4 million there's a lot of wide range here in terms of prices. Now, Flippa.com is another website where you'll find a lot of listings for digital businesses, including Amazon affiliate blogs. This right here is just the blog section and they have 5,280 listings right now. So there's quite a few available right now. If you are going to actually go ahead and buy a blog, definitely make sure you have an escrow agent and take a lot of time to do your due diligence and make sure that everything is legit. Just because this could be a sizable investment. My friend who has purchased an Amazon blog in the past paid around $25,000 for it. So these are quite a bit more expensive than what I know people have spent on them, but they're also probably more established in making more money. But I just wanna show you this for two reasons. Number one, you can buy a blog or you can sell the blog that you create if you get tired of operating it one day and you decide that you want to cash out. I did put the keyword of Amazon Associates in and that narrowed us down to 200 170 listings. Sometimes you can even figure out uh, if it has the name of the listing in the photos, you can then look at the website itself and see how it's monetized and do further research on it. But this particular website is nine years old. It has a 97% profit margin. So that must be something where all the content is being created by the operator or the owner. And probably that 3% that is being spent is going towards web hosting and things like that. 21,000 page views a month. At this point, Point in time, we're going to start the sign up process for the Amazon Associates program. You're going to navigate over to its affiliate programs.amazon.com, or you can just Google Amazon Associates program, click on that link. And then when you get to this page here, you're going to click on the yellow sign up button. At this point in time, if you're already an Amazon customer, you can log in and it will pre fill some of that information. But I'm just going to start from scratch here for demonstration purposes and say I'm new to Amazon and then create my Amazon account and I'm gonna fill this out with some fake information just for demonstration purposes. Now, once you enter your account information, which is just gonna be your personal information, it's like your name, your address, and things of that nature, which obviously I'm not gonna share on screen here. The next step in the application process is linking your websites or potential mobile apps, and I wanna show you guys how to do this here. And this is why we talked about the need for a platform, because you need to have a given online presence to be linking to Amazon from. In this particular case, we can add a YouTube channel and then we'll also just add in one of my blogs just so I can show you guys that process. First, we'll grab the link for my YouTube channel and then bring it back over here. What you're gonna do is paste in your particular link and then click on the add button. We'll automatically add in the HTTP and the extra stuff needed. And if you do have a YouTube channel and a blog, for example, I would recommend linking both here. And then I pasted in my link to the other affiliate blog I showed you, Wine investorclub.com and then we're going to click on add and once you've added in your websites you're going to click on the next button at this point it asks you a question here whether or not your traffic sources are for children under the age of 13 and that's because there are specific regulations around that um, advertising towards kids and whatnot in this case it's a definite no in most cases it would be a no but if you were for example doing like a toy related affiliate
affiliate blog, you might need to answer a yes for this. But for me, I'm going to click on no and click on confirm. At this point, it asks you, what is your preferred associates store ID? And this is just the unique characters that go in your link that are attributed back to you. I think mine is like Ryan SCR 20 because I didn't fill this out. If you want something related to your brand or something like that, this is where you can fill that out. At this point, there's a fillable box where you have to type in information about the content that you create. And somebody on the other side of this application is going to look this over. So you want to be as professional as possible here and fill this information out to the best of your ability. So I'm just going to write a short description of the Wine Investor Club blog, and then I'll show you an example of that. What I typed out here is this blog creates content about investing in wine as well as other alternative investments. We plan on linking out to books and other resources on Amazon, and we primarily intend to promote books. So that's what I filled out here as a description. You're going to want to fill something out yourself for your particular niche, just explaining what it is that you're intending to create or what you're already creating and how you're going to use the Amazon program. Now, the next question here asks you which of the following best describes your content. And this can be a little confusing as there's some overlap here. You could say it's a blog. You could also say it's a content or niche website. These are pretty interchangeable, but I'm going to go ahead and say content or niche website. And then it says, how did you hear about us? At this point, you can just put whatever you want here. I'm just going to say from the amazon.com website. And then at this point, you're going to type in the CAPTCHA and finish your application. Now, I'm not actually going to submit this just because I already have multiple Amazon Associates accounts across my various blogs, but these are the exact steps that you would follow. And then once you click on finish, you then should get an email confirming your application. And then it's typically a couple of days that go by before you hear back in terms of getting approved, or they'll give you a reasoning as for why you were not approved for the program. Once you are approved, you'll be able to log in and see a dashboard just like this, except for the fact that you probably won't have anything on there in terms of clicks unless you've already started linking to products and bounties and things like that. But what I want to show you now is how to actually gather your product links. The first way to do it is to log into your Amazon Associates dashboard and then in a separate tab, go to Amazon. If you notice at the very top here, we have this new banner that says Amazon Associates Site Stripe. This is one of the ways to gather your links. So you can literally just use the Amazon platform natively like a consumer and then go to the product you're looking for and grab your link. So so let's say, for example, I was looking to get a link for Rich Dad Poor Dad for a video that I had done that maybe talked about it, for example. I would simply click on the particular book and then up top here, you can see get link and you want to simply do a text link. So clicking on text will then bring up this particular drop down. And if you have multiple Amazon Associates stores, you can click here and choose the different stores. So if you have multiple blogs, that can be really helpful for organization. Now, by default, it's going to give you this short shortened link. And this is exactly what I recommend using. We're going to talk about at the end of this, a couple of uh, rules about the Amazon program. And one of those involves cloaking or redirecting your Amazon links. So the best practice is just to use the link exactly as you received it and not to do redirects, for example. But we're going to talk about that in a little bit. What we're going to do for now is just copy this link. And then I'm just going to prove to you that it works. And then I'm going to show you the other method for sourcing product links. So pasting that into a private window, I click on enter and we can see it now brings us over to the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, but this is in fact my Amazon affiliate link. There used to be an alternative method for grabbing your links within Amazon. I don't believe that's there anymore because it now tells you about Site Stripe, which is what I showed you up top where you just grab your links using the Amazon website itself. So there actually isn't another method. There is one more thing I want to show you though, and that is the fact that if you go over to product linking, you now have this option here. If you go to product links for very various methods of linking to Amazon. So you can link to uh, favorite destinations in terms of choosing a product line. And, and if you wanted to link just to like, for example, the baby and nursery section, you know, best sellers, you can generate links that will just go to like the best sellers of baby. You can also link to search results or any page on Amazon. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific product that you're linking to on Amazon anymore. You could also link to a search result or a category of products 
if you wanted to do that all within the dashboard here. Now that we've covered how to apply for the Amazon Associates program and get your links, the next thing I wanna cover here is how to actually generate traffic to your blog or YouTube videos. And I'm gonna teach you some basic SEO approaches for figuring out terms that you can basically create content around and it works for either YouTube or Google. So no matter what approach you plan on following, knowing how to find the questions the internet is asking is super important and it's a pivotal component to affiliate marketing. The first thing I wanna do is revisit a very competitive search term. So we're gonna type out best toasters on Google and take a look at the results here. This would be an example of what people call a red ocean because it is very competitive and what you're looking for is a blue ocean where there's not as much competition. So if you think about sharks feeding in the water, the analogy does get kind of gross there in terms of the red, but I'll let you fill in the details yourself. But anyway, you wanna be in an ocean where there's not many sharks at all and there's plenty to eat versus being in a very competitive red ocean. So the blue ocean is where you want to be and this would be the opposite of that. We're gonna start with what you don't want first. Looking here at Best Toasters, you have somebody running an ad. So this is actually paid affiliate marketing. We talk more about this in my full guide on affiliate marketing, which is once again in the corner or down in the description. But paid affiliate marketing is different because people are looking to make more money from the commissions generated than they're spending on the ads. So there's actually two examples doing that. And then we have epicurious.com has the best toasters of 2023. What I want to do here is grab the very top ranking website. And I'm going to show you a tool you can use to figure out the domain authority of a website. And this basically tells you how authoritative it is in the eyes of Google. And the higher a domain authority is, the easier it is for a blog to rank. And it takes a long time to build domain authority with Google. A lot of my websites are over half a decade old and they're still not as high as you might think, but I'll show you some of that shortly. This is the Ahrefs website authority checker. You can just paste in any website, click on check authority. And this is at 85. That is like God level, unattainable. That's insane. Like that's beyond even like a news publication. So that's extremely high, would be impossible to compete with that unless you yourself are like the New York Times, for example. And so our blog has a 39, just for comparison's sake, 39 versus 85 would be very difficult to compete with that. Now, because it is related to our prior example, I wanna show you a lower competition search term where one of my friends has a blog that he bought. It's an Amazon blog that ranks in this search term. But anyway, the search term is best uh, pizza oven thermometers, and then we're gonna search that up. Now, this is a more specific term. It obviously is gonna have less traffic than somebody looking for like the best toaster, but these are low competition spaces. Now my friend's blog here is, uh, it doesn't look like it's actually the top one. It looks like it's showing up here. It looks like fourth result here. So it's the best infrared pizza thermometers. If we do grab the top ranking blog, Pizza People Arizona, we'll just check the authority of this website. And this would be another way to tell, is this a super competitive search term in niche or is it easier to rank? And this Pizza People AZ is only a domain rating of 21, indicating this is a pretty easy lower competition territory. You're still not gonna rank in this space overnight, but it is doable with super high quality content. I have various blogs that are in different stages of production, and we have blogs, for example, I'm gonna show you one at the end of this video. It's a starter website that has basically no authority, and it's ranking like third or fourth for a pretty lucrative search term around that niche. As long as you're looking in the right spaces and you're not putting yourself up against a battle you can't win, it is possible to rank with really good quality content in these bluer oceans. But if you're gonna write an article on the best toasters, like just don't even bother. There's no way that you're gonna rank for that competing against those titans. But how do you find these low competition search terms to go after in terms of making YouTube content or blog articles? I'm gonna show you a few methods for that now. The first one is the keyword planner tool that Google offers. Now, to my knowledge, as far as I know, you you only have to just create a free account here. You don't have to actually spend money on ads and then you can use these free tools. But all you have to do is search for the Google Keyword Planner and we're gonna click on Discover New Keywords. And this is going to give us ideas for keywords based on what we input. So I'm gonna type in Cat Scratcher and we're gonna see what related keywords show up for us. And based on the input of Cat Scratchers, it gave us 2,230 keyword ideas available. It's all sorts of search terms around that particular 
Elasticsearch search. So these are more long tail search terms. A lot of these are still pretty competitive and there is actually a competition tab here that indicates high, medium, low. This is not the most accurate, but it is good to look here and get a general idea. So what I'm gonna do is actually sort this the other direction. That way it's showing me the lower competition stuff and some of this isn't even rated here, but now we are seeing some in this low competition category. I would recommend taking your niche, dropping it into the keyword planner and just looking at some of these low competition searches. A few examples here, we have cat barrel scratcher, the pet kit four in one cat scratcher. I would look up and see if these things are specifically sold on Amazon. If this was your niche, best price cat scratching post, that's a low competition term. Putting catnip on scratcher, that's also low. So these are the things that you'd want to be looking at is, okay, these are low competition, long tail search terms. They're not gonna do a ton of hits, but it's gonna be something that's gonna get you established. And these would work for YouTube videos or they would work for blog articles or both. Another one of my favorite methods for getting ideas for content is just using Google itself and looking at the auto-suggested terms around a topic. So if we type in the same thing again, cat scratcher, now we see what people are searching alongside that. So you have cat scratcher cardboard, cat scratcher post, house, couch, bed, etc., etc. And what I recommend doing from here is typing in the letters of the alphabet A to Z and looking at what people are searching for as these are often a really good place to start. But I would still make sure that you click into the search term and look at some of the top ranking blogs or if there's people reviewing these things and checking that domain authority and making sure you're not in like a domain rating 80 environment where it's impossible to even compete in that space. But it looks like for this search term, there is a product called the Sofa Scratcher. There's a website for it, and I think they also have it on Amazon. So perhaps that could be a great place to start is the Sofa Scratcher review if you happen to be knowledgeable of that product. So that covers how to generate traffic by finding these search terms to eventually create content around. But now I wanna talk about what type of content to create because certain types of content do really well with Amazon affiliate links. And I'm gonna give you some examples of that now. First, we have, YouTube product reviews. And I found this one the other day and I wanted to share it as an example because this is an up and coming affiliate marketer right here because this YouTube channel has 206 subscribers. The video was posted two days ago and it has 125 views. And if you open up in the description, uh, he may not have his Amazon link yet. He's probably building out his content and then he's going to apply for the program. I wanted to show you examples of these simple reviews doing well right now. And this is a lower budget video. It does have a microphone, but nothing too crazy, probably something that most of us could accomplish at this point in time. Another piece of content that works really well is listicles, and this is just a format of content that is a list of different things. So the search term here we have is best Sphinx cat accessories, and if we click on enter, my fiance does have a blog in this space that she's working on because it is uh, something that we have a Sphinx cat, kind of a unique thing that most people don't know about. She's been building a blog around that. Very early stages below the sponsored stuff is Amazon, uh, not far below that. This one right here, sphinxcatlife.com is her blog. And if we click on that, we don't have Amazon links in place yet, just because she hasn't gotten quite enough traffic yet or content to apply, but we're getting close now. And you can see where this is just a list of the different Amazon products. And I actually told her as she was working on this to make sure a lot of it was Amazon related. That way, once she's in the program, all she has to do is drop the links right into this content. This format also works really well on YouTube, listicle format accessories, gadgets, things like that related to your niche. Another piece of content that works really well is FAQ or frequently asked questions. And this is where you're just answering the questions that people have about a particular product. But I wanna show you this website here, answerthepublic.com. You get a few free searches, I think per day. And if you sign up with your Gmail for free, you get more searches, but you can enter any search term here, one or two words, and it's gonna give you a list of all of the questions that people are asking around that particular thing. Let's say, for example, you wanted to corner the Amazon Audible niche and just cover all of the questions people had about that to generate those bounties. I typed in Amazon Audible, and now we're going to click on search, and this is going to generate a list of all of the questions people are asking about Amazon Audible. 
If you end up going over here and clicking on data, I find this to be the most useful as it just shows you all of the questions people are asking. So you have, are Amazon Audible books free? Is Amazon Audible free? Can Amazon Audible be shared with the family? These are all what I call FAQs, frequently asked questions. These are people who are ready to make a decision about signing up for Amazon Audible. You can answer that question in a simple manner, guide them through that process and say, hey, do you want the free trial? Here's my link and earn bounty in the process. So those are my recommendations as far as content goes. Honestly, doing straight up just reviews of products on Amazon is probably your best bet as a complete beginner because people are searching for those all the time. Other than getting into like tech reviews, which is gonna be super competitive, a lot of these niches are not that competitive. So simple videos shot with your phone with a little bit of time spent on preparing a script or just talking points can be very effective. But I do wanna talk about some mistakes to avoid because there are some specific rules to Amazon Associates, and then just some things to know about affiliate marketing in general. That way, when you begin placing your links in your content, you know that you're doing things in the right manner and being compliant with what Amazon is looking for. Now, they have an entire terms of service for their Amazon Associates program. You should, of course, read that yourself to familiarize yourself with all of this. But anyway, the first thing is you need to disclose your content as having an affiliate link. If you are doing Amazon affiliate links, there's boilerplate templates you can use. My friend, for example, on his website uses an affiliate disclosure. I'll put that up on screen just for an example. So this is something that you want to have in place anywhere that you have your affiliate links present. And if you are doing a YouTube video, uh, a verbal call to action is probably a good idea too of, hey, that's an Amazon affiliate link. The next thing you should know is that you cannot run ads for your Amazon affiliate links. Now, I did show you examples of people doing paid affiliate marketing, but you might come across examples of people doing something you're not supposed to do and getting away with it for a period of time, or maybe that is allowed in certain circumstances. In most cases, running ads with your Amazon affiliate links is a big no-no and it can get you kicked out of the program. Another thing is link cloaking. You can get in trouble for this, I've heard. Now, I've personally done it before and I haven't gotten in trouble, but that doesn't mean that you should necessarily do it. It could mean that I just haven't gotten caught doing it, for example, but it is technically disallowed. This is where you are redirecting to your Amazon link from another one of your website links or this could even be something like a bit.ly link shortener. The best practice here, according to the terms of service, is just using that shortened link right out of Amazon and not doing any kind of redirect or anything like that. Another big no-no is using Amazon affiliate links in your email list. They do not want you doing that whatsoever. It's probably because Amazon is doing their own email marketing with their customers and they don't want you competing with that, but either way, do not put them in your email list. And then finally, no buying stuff with your own link. It's very easy for them to track that with IP addresses and so many different things. You might get away with it a few times, but the one time you don't could completely ruin your affiliate marketing operation. So you're probably better off just avoiding anything like that, trying to game the system. But anyways, guys, that is the Amazon Associates program and Amazon Affiliate Marketing for Beginners and everything you need to know. At this point, you pretty much just have to choose if you're going to go the route of doing a YouTube channel, or maybe you're going to start by building out a blog, or maybe you want to start by vetting businesses that are for sale and potentially buying that. There's so many different avenues to consider. I hope this helped point you in the right direction. I'm definitely excited for your future as a Amazon associate generating commissions and bounties. It's been one of those things that I've done for years. It's a pretty boring program, but it's a consistent couple hundred dollars a month. Even though mine has dwindled, it's just because I haven't created any content around it. At some point in time, I may feel like redoing certain things that have done well and re-sparking those flames for the Amazon commissions. But like I said, most people will start off there and then go into other programs that have higher potential. That's mostly what I've done myself is just found better opportunities to get a higher ROI on my time invested into that content. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my full 50 minute affiliate marketing tutorial linked up in the description below. It's gonna cover a lot more in terms of affiliate blogging, paid affiliate marketing, and some of those other categories that we didn't really touch on in this video. That would be a great supplement to this video here. Lastly, I do have a book about my online business journey called From Side Hustle to Main Hustle to Millionaire, and that is available in person at Barnes & Noble. It's also at libraries across the United States, and you'll also find it over on Audible, an author-narrated version.
Martin. So definitely grab a copy of that as affiliate marketing is discussed quite a bit in my book. But thank you guys so much for tuning in and sticking with me for the full duration of this video. You can click right now to start watching my affiliate marketing for beginners video, and I hope to see you over there.